Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we'll learn about uh, constraint least squares filter or also known as the CLS filter. So in this lecture, we'll learn about uh, constraint least squares filter or simply called as CLS filter. Um, as we have studied in the previous lecture, uh, the Wiener filter is not optimal when we do not have information on the power spectra. And uh, the performance of Wiener filtering depends upon the correct estimation of the value of K. Uh, that is the performance of Wiener filter depends upon how correctly we can estimate what is the power spectra of original undegraded image. And in case of this uh, constrained least squares filter, it does not make any assumption about the original undegraded image. It makes use of only the mean and variance of the noise uh, and to uh, summarize uh, the difference uh, between the two uh, the CLS and the Wiener filter the Wiener filter is uh, optimal in average sense means it it it, uh, it becomes uh, optimal when we consider all kinds of uh, uh, scenarios it's optimal in average sense but this uh, CLS yields optimal results suitable to each image to which it is applied. So that is the main difference. So Wiener filter is optimized for average case, but CLS yields optimal results for each individual case. So that is the takeaway from this slide. Uh, we have a degradation uh, model uh, given by the equation, which we have already seen, which is g of x phi equal to f of x phi convolution h of x phi plus eta of x comma y. So uh, we know that uh, h of x y is the degradation function, eta of x y is the noise, and f of x y is the original image, and j of x y is the degraded image. Now we can represent this equation in matrix form, which is given by g is equal to h f plus eta. And, uh, this, uh, and central to the method which uh, we are developing is the issue of the sensitivity of h to noise. One way to uh, alleviate the noise sensitivity uh, problem is to base optimality of restoration on a measure of smoothness such as a second derivative of an image uh, which we can recall as the Laplacian operator which we studied in the second module. And uh, to be meaningful the restoration must be constrained by the parameter of the operator. Uh, by the parameters of the problems at hand. Thus, what is desired is to find the minimum of a criteria function C. Okay, so the objective is to find the minimum of a criteria function C, which uh, is uh, defined as C is equal to a summation function x and y, uh, x varies from 0 to m minus 1, and y varies from 0 to n minus 1 of del square which represents the Laplacian operator uh, second derivative into f of x y whole square okay uh, which is subject to the constraint g minus uh, f cap whole square is equal to eta square so here h is the degradation function g is the degraded image and f cap is the estimate uh, sorry f cap is the estimate of the original image and uh, here w square is equal to w transpose into w is the euclidean vector norm and f cap is the estimate of the undegraded image as we mentioned earlier so uh, we get a constrained least squares filter f cap of uv is equal to conjugate of uh, h of uv divided by h of uv square plus gamma of p of uv square into g of uv where p of uv is the Fourier transform of 
P of x y which is given by this Laplacian operator. Okay. So this we have started in the second module. Uh, and uh, we need to note that gamma, this gamma is a parameter that must be adjusted so that the constraint in this equation g minus h minus uh, g minus h f cap full square equal to eta square must be uh, uh, satisfied. Okay, so we should adjust the gamma to satisfy this condition. Okay, so to satisfy this constraint. Let us now understand the difference between constrained least square filter and a Wiener filter and how they perform under different uh, noise conditions. So here we have the test con uh, test image which we have already seen in the previous lecture. So uh, we have added uh, motion blur plus uh, varying amount of AWG. And so in the first image, the noise variance is, uh, noise is quite high uh, at 650, uh, variance of 650. And uh, second image is 325 and third image it's quite less at uh, 130. Now if you pass this image uh, through a CLS, this will be the result. And it has uh, somewhat restored the letters and uh, some other objects. And if you pass this image through the Wiener filter, you can see it's somewhat blurry. You can still read the letters, but still it's somewhat blurry. And uh, the second case, uh, it's better uh, in a CLS and uh, in a Wiener filter again it's somewhat blurry and in the third case where the noise variance is quite low if you pass this image through the CLS you can see the result is excellent it, it looks quite nice and even the pattern in this dark space is uh, reproduced uh, properly here and uh, Wiener filter is similar Okay, so uh, the performance of winner is similar in this case when the noise variance is low. So the main takeaway is when the noise is high, uh, the CLS performs better. And when the noise is low, uh, the performance of CLS is uh, similar to that of a winner filter. It is possible to adjust the parameter gamma interactively uh, until acceptable results are achieved. If you are interested in uh, optimality, then a uh, parameter gamma must be adjusted so that the constraint is uh, satisfied. A procedure for computing gamma by iteration is as uh, follows. So we'll uh, first define a residual vector r as uh, r is equal to g minus h into f cap. It can be shown that phi of gamma is equal to R is to T into R, which is equal to R square. We want to adjust gamma so that uh, R square is equal to eta square plus or minus A, where A is the accuracy factor. So the steps are, uh, first we'll uh, specify an initial value of gamma, and then we'll compute uh, gamma square, uh, sorry, uh, we'll compute uh, R square. Third step, uh, will stop if uh, the first condition is satisfied or the first equation is satisfied otherwise we'll return to step two after uh, increasing gamma if uh, r square is less than eta square minus a uh, or uh, decreasing gamma if uh, r square is greater than eta square plus a okay so we'll uh, increase if uh, r square is less than eta square minus a and we'll decrease gamma if r square is greater than eta square plus a and we'll use the new value of gamma to recompute uh, so this is the final equation f cap is equal to f cap of uv is equal to h conjugate uv by um, magnitude of h of uv square plus gamma into magnitude of p of uv whole square into g of uv. Uh, let us understand the 
effect of using wrong or right uh, value of gamma for image restoration using the CLS method. So we have the original image which we have already seen uh, uh, in previous examples. Now uh, on this uh, original image we'll apply noise. So we'll uh, put some uh, turbulence uh, noise and this is the resultant image and you can see it's a, it's a blurred image. Now if you try to recover this blurred image, if you try to restore this image using uh, correct parameters, the result will be like this. So uh, in order to get this uh, result, uh, we use the parameters uh, like this gamma initially was set to 10 to minus 5 and uh, the correction factor was 10 to minus 6 and we use the value of A equal to 0.25 and uh, noise variance was kept at 10 to minus 5. Now for this blurred image if you choose the wrong parameters then uh, this will be the result you can see it is blurred because the parameter that was chosen was uh, the noise variance was 10 to minus 2 which is improper uh, for this setup. So this is the uh, effect of using right or wrong type of uh, 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 wrong values of gamma for restoration. To summarize about the CLS and the Wiener filter methods, uh, when the noise is low, Wiener and the CLS generate equal results. But when the noise content is high, then CLS basically outperforms the Wiener filter if gamma value is properly selected. And it is easier to select the scalar value for gamma than to approximate the SNR, uh, which is seldom constant in case of uh, uh, Wiener filter. So, as stated uh, at the beginning of this uh, lecture, it is important to keep in mind that uh, optimum restoration in the sense of constrained least squares does not necessarily imply best in the visual sense. Depending on the nature and magnitude of the degradation and noise, the other parameters in the algorithm for iteratively determining the optimum estimatic estimate also play a role in the final result. In general, automatically determined restoration filters yield inferior results to manual adjustment of filter parameters. This is particularly true for a CLS filter, which is basically a completely specified by a single scalar parameter. This marks the end of model 3 which is uh, image restoration. In the next model, uh, we'll learn about uh, color, image processing, wavelets and uh, morphological image processing. So in this lecture, we have looked at uh, constrained least squares filter also known as the CLS filter. And we studied about uh, uh, optimizing the parameters and uh, how it is different from the Wiener filter, pros and cons, all those things we looked at. And in the next lecture, we'll uh, learn about uh, color image processing, which is uh, the part of module 4. See you at the next lecture. Thank you.